All right, we are now recording. Welcome to the engineering technology class for September the 28th. Uh, so I looked at the submissions that you guys gave me for the engineering specifications. Many of you did an excellent job. You clearly understand what it is that I was looking for. A fair number of you still didn't. Um, some of the what you submitted didn't really describe the testing matrix and didn't talk about how we arrived at the testing matrix. And then, of course, there's always some of you that didn't submit anything at all. Don't know what to do about you guys. Um, so before I start into the new stuff, let me just ask, uh, are there any questions about what we did? Any questions about anything at all? When is the final assignment going to be due? Well, I was going to have us work on the launching the rockets today and have the final re report due next time. But then I got thinking about it as I was reading through the submissions there uh, and thinking about the logistics of how it would run. I decided that I want to change things up a little bit. I decided that instead of doing three prototypes, I want to do more than three. And instead of analyzing them with three different levels, I want to simplify that. So basically, I'm going to talk through in a few minutes, I'm going to talk through the changes that I decided I want to make. And so then I'm going to have you resubmit your engineering specifications based on the new way of doing things that I will be explaining in a few minutes. So your homework tonight will be just to rewrite the engineering specifications. Uh, and, and that'll be all you need to do for this time around. Uh, and then on Wednesday, that's when we will uh, decide what to do and, uh, and how, to, how to approach it. And then I will give you all weekend long to work on doing the testing and writing up the final report. So the answer to your question is that the, the final report, including you know, the testing, the test results, everything, that'll be due first time we meet next week. That won't be due this week. Okay, any other questions? All right, so uh, let's, let's go into the changes that I decided to make when I looked at your, uh, when I looked at your submissions and I thought about how we would go about doing it. And I, I saw that it was a little bit a little bit muddy in some places, a little bit over ambitious in other places. Okay, so let me share my whiteboard with you. Okay. First off, let's just let's just step back here and let's ask ourselves if we were to test every possible combination of every possible variable, how many prototype rockets would we have to make? Okay, so first, let's, let's just look at a, a few of the variables. Let's suppose that one of the variables we want to look at is the length of the rocket. Okay, and so let's, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table here like we did last time and like you guys did in your homework, those of you that did it. Okay, and so, so up here we have the variable. And here we have the low setting, here we have the medium setting, and here we have the high setting. Okay, so for the length of the rocket, if we decided that the medium setting is going to be just one piece of paper um, rolled up the way that we talked about before. So that's gonna be 11 inches long. When, when I make those little marks like that, that means inches, some of you may not know. So how about if I just say, I'll do it this way, 11 inches, okay? And then let's say that another uh, setting for that variable might be that we only do a, like a six inch rocket. And then the high setting for that variable, I don't know, let's say we do an 18 inch rocket. All right, 
Now, if that was the only variable there was to play with, then I hope you guys realize that making three rockets would be enough to test them. But that's not the only variable to play with. So let's look at the uh, another variable. Um, why don't you guys help me out? Somebody unmute yourself and tell me what's another variable that we know is going to affect the flight of the rocket. Uh, what about the fins? The fin fins. size. Okay, fin size, great. Okay, so let's say that the fin size. All right, and let's say that the low setting for that would be no fins at all. Let's say that the medium setting for that would be the default fins. So if you take the template that I gave you and you print it out as, as, you know, uh, you know, as I gave you with no changes, okay, if you were to cut along the dotted lines and stop on the dotted lines there, let's say that that's the, the medium uh, case. So that would be, so I'm going to call that the default size. And by that, I mean the size that's on the template. And then for the high setting for that variable, let's suppose that we go with really large size. You know, let's say, I'm just going to say bigger, but I'm going to leave it vague. Uh, and I'll let you decide what is bigger, but, but something bigger than the template. So you cut the, cut the fins uh, deeper than what is shown on the template. Okay, so now let's just stop here for a minute and let's ask ourselves if those were the only two variables that we had to play with and we wanted to make rockets that tested all of the different variables, how many prototype rockets would we have to make? So let me go back to my sharing here. Okay, so we've got three different lengths of rocket that we could go with, three different fin sizes that we could go with. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to type into the chat box how many different prototypes, if those were the only variables, if there were no other variables at all, how many would we have to go with? And also I see that KJ has typed a question in the chat box saying, do you have to use my template? Well, you don't have to print my template. You can just take a blank piece of paper and as long as you cut, uh, cut slits in it that are in the same place as mine and the same length of this mine, that'll be fine. Okay, good. All right, so uh, and I see a lot of numbers being typed into the chat box and it looks like pretty much everybody agrees that nine would be how many rockets we would have to make. Let me just play devil's advocate. Why not six? I mean, how did you come up with nine? So let's see. So how about, how about uh, Yosef? Can you tell us how did you come up with the number nine? Can you unmute yourself then? Sorry, uh, can you repeat the question again? How did you come up with the number nine? Nine for the fin size, I got... Sorry, sorry, someone's at my door, sorry. Okay, Sophia, you also said nine. Can you tell us how you came up with nine? Um, so I took the first length, which is six inches, and then I did six inches would have no fins, the default size, and then the bigger fins. And then I did 11 inches, and it would have the same thing, no fins, the default size, and then bigger fins. And then the 18 inch length would have no fins, the default size, and the bigger fins. Okay, you guys agree? Okay, so if we take the, the length of the rocket and we say we're going to go with the, the, the six inch one here. Hang on a sec. Let me, okay, I'm going to change the black pen. Okay, so if we look at this, just that length of rocket, we would have to make three different fin sizes in order to fully test the combination 
of fin size together with just that one length. Then we'd have to do it again for the medium. We'd have to make three different rockets that have a medium length. And then we'd have to do it again for the high rocket. We'd have to make three rockets that have the high. So what we've got is we got we've got three possibilities of rocket lengths. We got three possibilities of fin size. So that means that three times three tells us how many different combinations we could come up with for the number of prototypes that we would need to make. Okay, good. Now let's add in some more. Let's say, what if we look at one other variable? So uh, Giovanni, can you tell me what is another variable that might possibly affect the performance of the rocket? Um, weight. Okay, so I mean weight in the nose? Okay. Yeah, like adding a penny or something. Okay, so the weight in the nose cone. All right, so let's talk about, so the lowest reasonable setting to use for that would be, of course, to say no pennies. The highest setting is open to debate. Um, I personally would pick four pennies as being my maximum. Now, some of you might say, not penny singular, I want pennies plural. Now, some of you might say, oh, that's too wimpy. Let's go with six or even eight. And if that's the case, my response to you is to say, okay, um, if, you, if you want to go with the maximum of six or maximum of eight, more power to you. Um, I personally you know, would go with four, but uh, I'm, I'm okay with you doing different than that. So whatever you pick for your maximum, I want you to take half of that as your medium setting. So obviously, please don't pick an odd number of pennies for your maximum. Go with an even number. So for me, my medium setting would be two pennies. If you want to go with six as your maximum, then three would be your medium setting. Okay, now here's the big question. Okay. By adding that extra variable, now how many prototype rockets would we have to make? in order to test both wait wait never mind so i want you guys to type it into the chat box ah okay it looks like everybody's in agreement here okay so it looks like you're all agreeing that 27 is what we would need and by the way i also agree with that because now what we're doing here is we're saying okay we've got so the, we got three combinations here, we got three combinations here, we multiplied them to get the total. So once we add in this new variable, which also has three different levels, that means we have to multiply it by three. So three times three times three is 27. So holy cow, the job all of a sudden became way more difficult here. If we want to test every possible combination of rockets, if we have three different variables, that means we would have to make 27 rockets. Wow. Can I draw a diagram to show how this would work? Because I yeah. think I have a good yeah, idea. Yeah, do you want, you want a clean, uh, clean piece of paper? Yeah, want... sure. Okay, so here, let me give you a clean piece of paper. Okay, so you should have privileges to draw on the screen. Go right ahead. Okay, so it goes like this per step. Ah, I like what you're doing here. Ah. <laughs> we have the same problem. It's hard to draw on the screen. Yeah. Are you, do you have a touchscreen computer or are you trying to do you use your mouse? No, I'm using my mouse or oh. trackpad. So. Oh, that's even harder. Oh. Yeah. And then each of these divide into three. So then it's just the total number on the bottom. Yes. So, and then it would be for this step, it would be 27. Yeah. Okay. So each time you add a new variable, okay. You're, you're making it way worse. The number of possible rocket prototypes you'd have to make becomes very big, very fast. Okay, thanks, Adam, we get the idea. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I want you guys to list all of the different variables, 
that we might, might possibly have to play with. And now before you do that, let me open up a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, just, I don't know if you guys are familiar, have you played, I don't know if you've played with Excel or not. It's a program that everybody should get familiar with. It's, it's great. Um, so uh, I, hang on a sec while I share my screen here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is on my column A here, I'm going to list the variables that might possibly affect, boy, that's almost as bad as when I handwrite it, huh? Is that better now? Okay, all right, so all of the variables that might possibly affect the flight of the rocket. Okay, so I want you guys now to call them out to me. So what is one variable that might affect the flight of the rocket? Weight. Nose. So weight and the nose. What's another one? Fins. What about the fins? Fin size? Uh, yeah. Oops. Boy, that's terrible. Let's try that again. Okay. What's another what one? What about the tightness Thanks. of the rocket? Okay, the tightness when we roll the rocket. Um, length. Okay, length. Okay, good. Hang on a sec. Let me let me capture these. So the length of the rocket or the launcher? The uh, the rocket. Okay. But well, while we're at it, the length of the launcher is another obvious one, which is a separate one. Okay, Who, what else? Uh, nose cone shape. Uh, shape of the nose cone. Uh, let me just say shape of the nose. Okay. The type of paper. Type of paper. What else? Type of tape. Type of tape. Okay. Type of glue. Uh, type of glue. Uh, we're not allowed to use glue. Okay. That, that should have been clear from the functional specification. What else? Nose cone size or shape, I mean. Oh, we got that one. That's on line number seven. Okay. Um, I guess where the fins are placed. Ooh, you mean like wings? Or, uh, well, like if the fins are on the bottom or in the middle of the rocket. Okay. Fin right. corner. Um, I'm out if, of fins. If, if we were to put fins in the middle of the rocket, I don't want to call them fins anymore, but I'm, I am willing to call them wings. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's say wing uh, size, okay, right? Uh, you guys are slowing down, so am I. Amount of fins. Okay, the number of fins. Okay, all right. So now, uh, let's let's call that good. So if we were to make three different settings, if we have a low, a medium, and a high setting, okay, how many rockets, how many prototype rockets would we have to make in order to completely cover this entire test matrix? So, okay, you understand what I'm asking? So I want you guys to type into the chat box, if we were to make a prototype rocket that covered every possible combination of every variable, how many ro prototype rockets would we have to make? I want you to type it into the chat box. Yeah, my chat box went away here. Hmm. Okay, oh, okay, wow, I'm seeing some big numbers there. Okay, 
So it looks like you're saying three to the tenth, so you get like 59,000. Okay, very good. All right, that's the number that I get as well. Okay, so you see the problem here. This is why the process that I described last time, which is called design of experiment, which is just DOE. I mean, if you, if you just talk to an engineer and you just use the phrase DOE, they'll, they'll probably understand what you mean because it's such a commonly used phrase. This is why the DOE process is so very, very important because so many times in an engineer's life, they need to find what the optimum settings for, for something they're building or something they're doing or some chemical process that they're supervising. And so if they make a list of all the variables that there are to play with to try and optimize this thing, and, uh, and they play with the different settings that you might possibly want, it quickly gets up into the thousands or the tens of thousands or even higher. Um, and so clearly it is impossible to cover every single combination in our, uh, in our experimental space here. All right, so what, uh, what we're gonna do is let's go back and let's look at our, our, our testing matrix here. So tell me, what did we do last time in order to make the job a little bit more manageable? Somebody unmute yourself. What did we decide we would do to make the job a little bit more manageable? Um, um, so what we did was uh, we, we made it so that three primary variables, they had to be different. But then the secondary variables, they all had to be the same. Therefore, it'd be easier. Very, very good. So we had to we had to decide which variables we wanted to be our primary variables. Okay. So we had to, we had to somehow use whatever experience we have to to look at all these possible variables here and pick out which three are the ones that we think are probably going to be the most, most important. And so in order to do that, um, we have to call on our experience as an engineer. So if we, if we were working with rockets here, hopefully, you know, we didn't just start working with rockets yesterday. Hopefully we've got several months or preferably years worth of experience. And so based on that experience, we should have a pretty good feel for which one of these variables are going to be the primary variables. So I want you guys to do, oh, by the way, everything that we're doing right now, I want you to keep track of, make notes about, because your homework tonight is gonna to be to resubmit the engineering specification. And I want you to explain how we came up with the test matrix. And we're gonna come up with a slightly uh, different test matrix this time than we did last time. I want you to talk about how we did it. Okay, so, so step number one is just list out all the variables. Um, and now step, and so it's kind of like brainstorming. Basically, that's what it is, is just the brainstorming. So step two is we need to decide what the primary variables are. And so I'm going to let you guys decide that. So I want you guys to take a vote by typing into the chat box. If you could only pick one variable as the one that you think probably has the biggest effect on how, how far this rocket's going to go, what would that one variable be? Everybody has to vote. Start now. Okay. All right. I'm seeing one which is kind of predominant. Okay, good. There's a few others thrown in there. Good. A couple of you haven't voted yet. Okay. All right, I think we pretty much got most of them. All right, so what I'm seeing is that most people, not everybody, but most people are saying that they think that weight in the nose is the number one, okay? And so there it is, so it's already in the number one spot. If it, if it wasn't in the number one spot, what I would do is I would move it around because it's one nice thing about Excel. If you guys haven't used Excel, you really need to. It's really, really easy to move things around. Okay, so you guys have decided that you think weight in the nose is the number one thing. So let me move this out of the way here. In fact, I'm gonna take all these. Okay, so now, now it's time to vote for number two. 
right? So forget weight in the nose, that one has been taken. Now I want you to vote on what you think is the number two most important one. Okay. So you guys seem to be focused in on one. Okay, good. There's, all right, okay, so it looks like it's a race between the length of the rocket and the shape of the nose. Uh, yeah, it looks like length of the rocket. Okay, definitely length of the rocket is going to win. Okay, so let's take length of the rocket and let's move it up into the number two position. Okay, so I'm sure you guys uh, uh, can guess what's coming next. And Ibrahim, uh, don't worry about that. Um, uh, so Ibrahim just sent me a private message. You guys don't need to worry. Uh, okay, so time to vote for number three. All right, okay, good. Mm, interesting, it looks like it's kind of half and half. Oh, there's another one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is really interesting. So this one, there are lots of choices. But let me just say no agreement on that one, which is actually going to be okay for purposes of what I'm doing here. Okay. So what I want you to do is in your homework tonight, I want you to make up something like this. And by the way, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's add in a row here. Um, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, no. Okay. All right. Let me come back. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to let that third one be your choice. So everybody is going to have a different setting here. Okay. So for, uh, for weight in the nose, our low setting, let's say, would be no pennies. Okay, let me make this a little bigger here. Okay, for high, let's go with four pennies. And for medium, let's go with whatever half of high is, so it's gonna be two pennies. Okay, now, for length of the rocket, let's have our default be 11 inches. Let's have the low setting be, oh, how about six inches? And let's have the high setting be 18 inches. Okay. Now, your choice, okay? So if you want, say, the uh, type of paper to be the choice, then the, then the low would be tissue paper, the medium would be printer paper, and the high would be cardstock. If, on the other hand, you want the low, the, the, the other variable to be the tightness, then low would be really loose, medium would be kind of in between, and high would be super tight. Okay, so, so your choice here. So you're going to go with the low here, and you're going to go with the medium here, and you're going with the high here. Okay, all right. So, I want to know how many prototype rockets we would have to make now. If we just go with those three variables, and we have three different settings for those three variables, and all of the other variables, we decide that we're going to keep them exactly the same for all of our prototypes. So what, whatever variable is down here as a secondary. So if it's shape of the nose, we, we have the same shape for all our prototypes. Type of paper, same for all. Um, right, how did, how did type of paper get in there twice? Oh, type of tape, I'm sorry. Okay, type of tape, same for all. Wings, okay, so if we only went with our primary variables here of three, how many prototypes would we have to make? Okay, so I see some of you are saying 27, one of you is saying 30, how about the rest of you? So remember, the way to do this is you take the number of choices for each one. Okay. So if we've got three possibilities for this one and three possibilities for that one and three possibilities for this one, the number of prototypes is going to be three times three times three, which is equal to 27. So you are right. Okay, so if we want to really do the job right for making all of these prototypes, 
we would have to have 27 prototypes. And I think that's not realistic for me to ask you to make 27 prototypes. So we're not going to do that. Okay. So what could we do in order to make the job easier? Well, how about if instead of doing three levels for each uh, variable, let's get rid of our medium ones here and let's just go with two levels. So that means we've got two possibilities for the weight in the nose. We've got two possibilities for the length of the rocket. We've got two possibilities for whatever your third choice is. And your third choice will be different from somebody else's third choice. So now I want you to type into the chat box, tell me now how many prototypes would we have to make? Okay, it looks like everybody's agreeing that it's eight. And I agree that that is the case because it's two times two times two, so that equals eight. Okay, all right, so eight prototypes. So now, here is the big change from what I had originally envisioned. I've, you know, I've thought about it some more and I've changed my mind. Instead of asking you to make three prototypes, I now want you to make eight prototypes, okay? Now, eight pieces of paper, that's not asking too much. You know, the tape, you know, it doesn't take up that much tape. I admit it takes a little bit of time. Okay, I won't argue with that. But I'm now I'm not going to make it due next time we meet. It's not going to be due until next week. So you've got the whole weekend to do this. So I think it's reasonable. Okay, so so new requirement now. I want everybody to make eight prototypes, not just the three that we talked about before. And the, so we're going to get rid of this middle one here. We're just going to make that go away. Okay. All right. And so, uh, so this is what, what it's, your testing matrix is going to look like. Um, so here is what I want you to do. So let's, uh, let's add in a few more columns here. Let's, let's uh, in fact, let's make up a new table here. Now you guys don't have to use Excel when you do this. Uh, if you want to just use a piece of paper and draw it by hand, I'm okay with that. Uh, if you don't have Excel on your computer, uh, but you'd like to do something that's similar to Excel, uh, do you guys know that Google Documents has a thing called Google Sheets, which is basically the Google version of Excel? It's really nice. Okay, so I want you to make a table like this. So the first column here is prototype number, okay? And so we're going to go with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's make all these be centered. So it just looks nice. Okay. And so your first variable here, we decided was the length of the rocket, if I remember right. So let's see. Somebody just type something in the chat box here. Unfortunately, I can't see the chat box. So if you have an important question, unmute yourself. Because sometimes when I share my screen, the chat box goes away. Okay. So our first variable here, what did we decide? It was weight in the nose cone is what we decided. Okay, so weight in the nose. Okay, our second variable, what did we decide that was going to be? That was length of the rocket. Okay, so length of the rocket. And then the third variable here. Um, your screen is frozen for me. Uh, is that true for the rest of you guys? Is the, is the yeah. Screen yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's been Nothing, frozen for a while. Happening. Okay, tell you what, I'm going to stop sharing. Did it just unfreeze? Yeah. Okay, good. Now I'm going to go back and share again. Okay, can you see my Excel spreadsheet now? Yeah, yeah. that's much better. Okay. All right, okay. Yeah. Thank you for alerting me of that. Okay, so the first column here, we got the prototypes one through eight. The second column is the whatever is our, our first primary variable, which we decided is the length weight in the nose. And I want all of you guys to use that as your, your first variable. 
The second one is length of the rocket, and I want all of you guys to use that as your second variable. Now, the third one is your choice. So I'm expecting that everybody will have a different variable for that. Okay, so now we need to decide what our prototypes are going to look like. Okay, so for weight in the nose, we've let, so we, we're only gonna do two levels. We're not gonna do low, medium, high. We're just gonna do low and, and high. So low then would be no pennies. Okay. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that four of our prototypes have no pennies in them. And then we're gonna make it so that four of our, the other four of our prototypes have four pennies. Okay. Or if you wanna do six, I'm okay with six. Oops, that wasn't what I wanna do. Try that again. Okay. Okay, so prototypes one through four are not going to have pennies in them. Prototypes five through eight are going to have pennies. Now, for the length of the rocket, we had, we had the short one, which is six inches. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say that two of our no penny rockets are going to have six inch, are going to be six inch rockets and two of our four penny rockets are gonna be six inch rockets, okay? And then the other length that we chose is 18 inches. So that means that uh, two of our no penny rockets are gonna have 18, are gonna be 18 inches long and two of our no penny, and two of our four penny rockets are gonna be, are gonna be 18 inches long. And then the last one is gonna be your choice. So whatever variable it is that you pick, one of your no penny rockets that is six inches long is gonna have whatever is the low setting for your choice. And the other one, the other one that has no pennies and six inches is gonna have whatever is the high setting for your choice. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, hang on a second here. Okay, so we're just going to copy that down there like that. All right, so, this now is the, is, is the list of the, the rockets that we are going to build. So this describes the rockets. And remember, all other variables uh, are held uh, constant. So what that means is for for whatever the, the secondary variables are, the, whatever the variables that were not our top three, we make them exactly the same for every rocket. So if, if the type of paper is what we're talking about, we make that be the same for every rocket, which by the way, I tell you what, I'd like, I'd like everyone to agree right now that let's just stick with one type of paper. And the reason I say that is because I think that many of you probably only have one kind of paper available. Not many of you have tissue paper that you can use. Not many of you have cardstock that you can use. So let's just all agree that everybody is gonna use regular weight printer paper, okay? And then when you roll it on the tube, make sure that all eight of your prototypes are rolled exactly the same tightness, unless for you, tightness was your third variable. Okay, if, if it was your third variable, okay, then be different, okay? And the shape of the nose, okay? If you chose shape of your nose to be your third variable, okay, then fine. But if you didn't, if you chose something else, make sure that all eight of your prototypes have exactly the same shape of nose and so forth and so on. Is that clear? Okay. All right, so how are we doing for time here? All right, so I see it's 3.05. So that means we've got a little bit over 30 minutes left. We've got about 35 minutes left in the class here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you use that remaining 35 minutes to write up a revised functional specification. And what I'll do is I haven't gotten in, in uh, Canvas yet, but uh, sometime in, in the next hour or two, I will go in and I'll add in a new assignment into Canvas and it'll be titled Revised Engineering Specification, okay? 
And so what I want you to do is I want you to tell me the, the testing matrix that you came up with. I want you to tell me the prototypes, the, the eight prototypes that you are going to make. I want you to describe to me. So basically, this table right here is what I want. Okay. Only in, I don't want the third column to say your choice. I want the third column to be some one of the variables. And you have to decide what the low and the high settings are for those. Okay. Um, and now this is really important. Everybody, I'm going to look you right in the eye here. I don't just want the table. I need some words. I need some par some paragraph, a paragraph or two that tells me how you came up with your prototype plan. I want you to talk about the fact that, that if we were to test every variable and if we did three levels per variable like we really want to, the number of rockets that we would have to make, the number of prototypes would be over 59,000, which is clearly unreasonable. Okay, so how did we deal with that problem? Well, I want you to talk about it in your report. I want to talk about, well, one way is that we decided that we would just focus on three primary variables and we would just take the rest of them and hold the rest of them exactly the same. That, that got rid of a couple tens of thousands of uh, prototype possibilities right there. But also, we decided that instead of doing three levels per, per variable, we were going to get it down to just two levels. And so that took it down from being 27 rockets down to just being eight rockets, right? Um, and so in addition to the table, I want to see words in paragraph format that tell me how we did this. And by the way, I want you to refer to this as design of experiment. And I want you to abbreviate it. And I want you to say design of experiment, comma, also known as DOE. D, capital D period, capital O period, capital E period. So the process that we just went through today is called design of experiment, okay, DOE. And I want you to talk about that and use that term in your report. Because guess what? That, le learning the design, the DOE process, that is the goal of what we're doing today. The goal of what we're doing is not to make a rocket that can go the farthest. I mean, that's a, that's a fun sub goal. But the real goal of what we're doing today is to learn the DOE process. Okay, that's really important. Okay, so we've got about 30 minutes left. Um, if you guys don't have any questions, you can go ahead and type by into the chat box. And then We'll see you again on Thursday. Remember, you don't have to actually make the rockets just yet. That'll be for this weekend. For right now, all you have to do is write a paper talking about the DOE process. But who had the um, most accurate plane? Oh, okay, you did, Max. Um, so I, I, I've got all of them here. And you, so you had the best one. Uh, the, the, near, the nearest one to you was about a little over 12 inches, about 12 and a half inches. Uh, there were a bunch of them that were in between one and two feet. Uh, and then there were a couple that were worse than that. But you were the only one that was less than a foot. So congratulations. Um, so for if we're changing the rocket length, I think we're going to have to change the launching tube length also. Because you can't blow a 18-inch rocket out of a 11 inch tube. So. Well, actually, it is possible to do, but I agree with you. It's better to have the tube longer. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish to, I wish you would have said something before everybody else logged off. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'll tell you what, on, uh, uh, on Wednesday when we meet again, can you speak up and say that? Because I think that'll be important for everybody. Okay. Thank Thanks. you for doing that.